that creative life. Are you living living that creative life? I am living. Hashtag that creative life. Guess what? That creative life is back, and you never know what you're gonna get from these videos because I'm gonna be changing it up. But today I have two interviews from some very smart, talented people. I think I have a little bit of creative know-how when it comes to videos or YouTube, but I am very fascinated by the design world and the opinions and expertise of illustrators and all of those types of people. So, Roberto Blake, Debbie Millman, those are the two people that I have today. So today's video is from designers' perspectives on how to get discovered, how to use the interwebs to brand yourself, to sell whatever you're trying to sell. Roberto Blake, he is much more than a designer. So he started out in graphic design, but now he is a YouTuber that posts almost every single day and he's also a creative entrepreneur and speaker. That dude does it all. And Debbie Millman, she's kind of a legend in the design community. So hold on, I... I had to write what she does and what she's done on a sticky note because I can't, can't remember everything. Debbie Millman, a well-known designer, educator, and writer. She hosts the very popular podcast Design Matters, written six books, co-founder with Stephen Heller, of the world's first graduate program in branding at the School of Visual Arts in New York City, was president of the design division at Sterling Brands, president emeritus of AIGA, editorial and creative director at Print Magazine, and board member of the Joyful Part Foundation. Are you an illustrator designer, but you are a master at branding. So can great branding sell a crappy product better than like vice versa, where it's a good product, but it has bad branding? I, I'll start off by saying, and this is a quote, um, somebody out there must love peach flavored powdered iced tea. Hmm. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because just the description alone, peach flavored, powdered iced tea. Doesn't sound that good, right? Now, companies don't arbitrarily put products on shelves and keep them there if they don't sell. So if something is crappy, it might get some good trial if it has good branding. People might be interested in trying it because they've heard about it or it's got particularly good advertising or a great new logo or a beautiful new bottle. But if it isn't good, if it doesn't deliver on the expectation of that promise, then no one is going to buy it again. And so the reason I say that somebody out there must really love peach flavored powdered iced tea is because it's on the market and it's been on the market for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And despite sounding kind of gruesome, it sells. So companies, corporations aren't altruistic. They only will put things on shelves because they pay to put things on shelves that sell. And so no matter the branding, whether it be good branding or bad branding, good branding might get somebody to be interested, but they're never ever going to keep buying something because of good branding if it doesn't deliver. And so while something might have bad brand, if it's been in the market for a long time, if it's got a great reputation, if it's something that people love and adore, people will buy it despite the fact that mm -hmm. it has bad branding. I define branding as deliberate differentiation. This is an intentional way of creating a difference between this thing and that thing. Yeah. If it's done well, it will capture people's attention. If it's done poorly, it still might capture people's attention, but it won't have longevity in the market. Mm -hmm. Good branding. So it might get you the initial attention, but a good product, a good service is what is gonna make people stay. The same is true for entertainment. The same is true for content creators. You can get that initial attention, but how do you make the people stay? You make quality, quality stuff. A lot of people, they are maybe into food. They are into a certain hobby and they want to start a blog and maybe not a YouTube channel. So maybe a picture-based website or text blogs and stuff. And what is your opinion? Maybe what are some best platforms to get into and to build into? Because I am a big believer that if you are starting from scratch, you should not go and just buy 
a website name and expect people to haul themselves over to saradici.com and like type that in every day. So what's kind of your view? What's the best platform to start on? What should people do be doing? The way you gotta think about it is how do I find one piece of paper in a folder and a filing cabinet full of folders and a room full of filing cabinets? It comes down to you gotta label stuff and then beyond that, you know, it'd be a lot easier to just like, instead of having someone hunt for something, Go to where they are and hand them the thing that they want, right? Hello. So that Perfect. really matters. That's why, like, that's why social media matters. But the other thing with a website, and businesses get this wrong all the time. I actually consult clients and I came from the world of web design and blogging way before YouTube anyway. That was what my actual gig was in the corporate world. And so my thing is that you, know, you can't just sit there and expect, oh, I, I built it and they will come. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, no, they have to have a reason. So I would say, number one, probably go to like places that already have some attention. Medium.com is already built into Twitter. It has search and share capabilities. And Medium is beautiful too. Oh, it looks For, gorgeous on post, a smartphone. And it's you can just, post high-res pictures, yeah. And I could just do it from my phone. It's just yeah. so simple, mm -hmm. right? So it's easy on you. It's easy to create there, it's easy to share, and it's easy for the person to read and for them to share it and to interact. That's the other thing. It's like you want other people sharing your stuff. Make it easy on them. Your own website is not always gonna be easy. Not to mention the time savings, okay? Like, I definitely believe that on some level, anyone who's gotta get into this stuff should have their own website. And there's certain features with like YouTube that you get to unlock with your own website, right? But, how do you get people there? You can't just expect people to go there on their own or to find it. They have to have a reason, so you have to, you know, when you're doing stuff like on your Medium, on your Twitter, on your whatever, you have to have a reason for them to actually come back to where your home is, to your core, but you have to meet them where they are. You have to go out to the bar, you have to go out to the club, you have to take them dancing, and then maybe they'll want to yeah. visit. Yeah. And Having those social interactions built in already is so beneficial because people are used to liking and, and doing those things to blog posts. And so what I noticed, I actually did a lot of blogging on saradici.com and it was such a pain to get people over to the website, you know, because you have to do such an extra push. It's so inconvenient for people to go out of their way to type in your name into a browser. And so if you already have something built into something like Medium, into something um, really like Tumblr is a good, it's still a viable option because you can do a lot of stuff with hashtagging things and collaborating with people. Um, it's so helpful to go where the people already are. I will open up my Medium app and just scroll. I will search new topics. I will discover a lot of new people that way. So you've worked with a ton of massive brands. Just brag a little bit. Just drop some names real quick. Some like big brands that you've branded for. Um, Star Wars. <laughs> Casual. Mic drop. Mic drop. All right, my guys. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Oftentimes my biggest challenges come with uploading consistently to YouTube while juggling bigger projects on the side, whether that is filming or editing for longer form stuff that might end up on YouTube eventually or other platforms. So that, that's, that's always the things that I'm battling with. But when you are heading out a team designing Star Wars merchandise, Holy cow. I can only imagine the obstacles and problems that you have to tackle when you're dealing with a project that size. Do you kind of have something that you do, whether it's with yourself or with your team, that is a strategy or just something that you do that helps you look at these epic, huge problems and helps break it down into like actual executable tasks? I don't really have an answer other than to take every problem seriously. Mm -hmm. And if you look at any problem, there's a need for some change, right? That specific need for change, if you start to compare it to other problems, then you're not focusing on the problem that you mm -hmm. need to change. So there really is no big problem versus a small problem if it's your problem. Ooh, it's all. That's good, yeah. It's, it's just a problem that you need to solve yeah. in some way. And you know, here I'm going to quote Brian Collins because he says that designers, people say in, in the world that designers are problem solvers. He counters that and he says designers should be problem makers hmm. because we are the ones that are able to create better situations and so that we should go out and seek those as opposed to wait for them to come to us. But getting back to your original question, 
I don't think you should ever compare one problem to another problem. And this could be whether it's something in your life or a project or a situation, because if it's something that's impacting you, somebody else, a community, the world, it all has to be taken with the same grain of seriousness. Otherwise, you run the risk of, of either taking it for granted, of not seeing the ramifications, and even the smallest, so to speak, quote unquote, problem could have huge, huge impact anywhere and everywhere. In terms of YouTube specifically now, mm -hmm. how can people, I talk about kind of vlogging versus searchable content. So when I say searchable content, that's maybe reviews of uh, you know gear or something around what you're passionate about, or maybe something super topical that's happening in the world. But there's so many things that you can do with SEO to optimize that. So I'm talking about title, the description of your video, the tags of your video. So how do you utilize that to get your video discovered? So that's a great question. I, I talk about this all the time. I even did a step-by-step -step tutorial on it. And part of it is, you have to understand what people are going to search for. The thing is, like, they'll type in like one word. Like, let's say you were doing a video, both of us did videos about the Sony RX100. Okay, you know what we didn't use as a keyword? We probably didn't use Sony. It's too generic, right? That could be anything. That could be any Sony camera. So what we typed in was for a search term in our tag, we had Sony RX100, Sony RX100 review, Sony RX100 test footage, Sony RX100 vlogging camera, like Mark V vlogging camera, whatever, right? So that's in the uh, tags. It's also in the first three lines of the description. And it's also somehow in the title. But then if like all the titles are the same, how do you make it unique? Well, like for my footage thing, I did a New York City shot on the Sony RX100 Mark V. I got that idea from your iPhone 7S video. Mm, yeah. So like that, you know, was a really good strategy. People do not understand how valuable the description is. So if you are just like, copying and pasting your social media handles and then like an about me in your description, you're doing it wrong. You need to put some things in there that are unique to that video. It's like leaving your content for dead. It's like you're not giving it any legs to stand on. You're not helping it. You need to have a really definitive content strategy and it really has three legs just like a tripod. You need stuff that's very community driven, like the stuff that you do that's straight up Peachy Fam is gonna support it no matter what. It's gonna get 50,000 views no matter what. You need content like that. You need searchable content that can bring in new people that have no idea, that can fall in love with you. And then you need content that is a calling card. You need your big hero content that's gonna move the needle on the things that matter to you the most in your life or in your career. And for you, that's things like Creative Spaces TV and that creative life. Those are your your your, uh, your films. Those are your big calling cards. Those are the big business things, some of the sponsored stuff. I hope this got your brain going, whether you're trying to sell your skills to the world or to a company or maybe trying to sell a product or service. Let me know if you like this video and hit that subscribe button down below. New videos every Monday through Friday. Go check out Roberto's YouTube channel and also check out Debbie's podcast, Design Matters. It is so good. All those links will be in the description below. Until next time, stay peachy. Okay, bye.